Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of James's Minecraft Journal. Uh, this is day 70, 71 I think. And this episode we're going to be working in the nether. Um, I mentioned that I, or I might have mentioned that I wanted to do a blaze farm. Oh yeah I did because we went and checked out the spawners. However, 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 there is more to this than we think. Or as you think. Or maybe as I think. Anyway, we'll should find out. So basically what happened was, we you, were, you remember last episode we were over at the desert place, which is that way, I think, or actually behind us, and I decided to make the journey back here because, well, this is where the main base is, this is where everything is. So I walked through the nether, and uh, basically I died. I, came, I found a nether fortress, died, um, and then I had to go get my stuff again, but then look what else I found. It's a nether, so you know what it is, but <laughs> I might as well build up the suspense. Where is it? It's down here. You might be able to see the blocks there. It is another nether fortress. So, so close to, like, where we were. I had no idea this was here. And it's unexplored. I didn't take everything, or I didn't take anything, to be honest. I just left it as it was. Maybe took away a few blocks, but let's oh, check the chests. See what we got. Nether wart, that's good. Uh, I'm going to take the nether wart even though we're not going to use it just yet. Although, in due course, I think we're going to be building some sort of a potion place. All the potions will come uh, in a few episodes time. Got more nether wart there, which is good. Oh, it was to one of these guys I died to. Like, I don't even know what happened. I just kind of, like, tried to run past him. Oh. And then, like, he killed me. I have no idea what happened, honestly. I just... I, maybe I liked it. Who knows? I wasn't even recording, which was a strange thing. Maybe I was on a high render distance or something. Uh, so, yeah. My thinking was to use... Oh, whoa! Just like that. Can you not get past? Ah, sucker. Oh! Most spamming. Ah. What, what even am I on? Two. Let's go down to two. Um, so yeah, my thinking is, because there's uh, two blaze spawners in here. Ooh, diamonds, nice. There's two blaze spawners uh, here as well. However, they are not, uh, how, should, how should I put it, double spawners. They're not close to each other. We could not make a double blaze spawner out of them. So, I'm torn between going back to that last fortress, uh, the one that we explored the other day, the, the first one we found, the dud, basically, and turning those two spawners into a double spawner, or just doing a single one here. I'm not too sure about it right now, to be honest. But I guess that's why we're here. We're here to, um, I guess, just work out what it is exactly we want to do with uh, with the whole whole, whole blaze spawner thing. So a double, a double spawner would be good, but I'm not entirely sure how much bet. Well, I guess it would be better to be like basically double the amount of XP. I think in the end I might go with it, but it's probably good to check out the spawners here. Another saddle. Not that we've not got any of those. Uh, so yeah, I've basically, I'm just going to spend most of the today working on it. I'm not going to get dragged into playing PvP. I'm not going to get dragged into uh, UHC or anything. I'm just going to focus entire The pit of death right there, eh? I'm not going to get dragged into doing uh, things that will distract me. I'm just going to focus purely on a blaze farm, but hopefully I can get it completely finished today. The blaze farms usually take me about a day to finish uh, if, if I work on them solidly for like 12 hours. Uh, maybe less, I don't know. Maybe I've got better at it because I've built so many. And I've built so many of the same type. I use um, I use the design that uh, Etho uh, has 
put up. It's got over a million views, I think. I just use that design because it's uh, it works well. We don't need it to be an automatic farm. We need it to be an a AFK farm because it is the XP that, that we're after. Blaze drop uh, more XP than any other mob in the game, I think. I think that's still the case. So, uh, yeah. That should be a useful way of getting it. And we've only really got one XP farm at the minute. It's a zombie one. So it's it'll be nice to get a another one as well. And obviously, any XP farm is basically the same because it's uh, it provides you with XP, but it's nice to have uh, a variety just in case, in case you uh, in case you need it, because it provides you with other resources as well, such as blaze rods. And obviously, the zombie one provides us with rotten flesh. Not that we need rotten flesh, but. If ever there's a use for rotten flesh, then we'll have a lot of it. Oh, and here we are back at the um, at the connection of the two parts of the fortress. Let's go and run along here. So one blaze spawner was to the right here. Let's just go take a look. Yep, right over here. So here's one of them. It's fair enough. Oh bother. Fire protection, eat it. Alright, and then the other one is I think way, 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 way down here. <coughs> Excuse me. Now obviously these uh, these spawners are, uh, yeah, down here. These spawners are obviously better for building in because there's like they're enclosed so it's, you know, it makes it easier for building to, but then again the other ones I guess they're out in the open, so it means you have to dig away less. And I'll probably build the spawner in peaceful. Uh, peaceful. I know that sounds kind of lame, but I really just can't be bothered with dealing with those guys. And we'll just, I think we'll just go for it. Um, yep, that's that's my thoughts anyway. Peaceful's kind of lame, yes, but I will make the reservations in order to make the game more fun. I will build things on peaceful. Uh, I forgot how I got in here, I think it's this way. We're just going to leave the nether wart, we can uh, pick it up another time. This is not the way. So yeah, I was thinking episode uh, 75 will be the time when we start brewing potions. I mean, obviously, in my single player, I don't use potions extensively, but I guess they're always good to have. You never know when you'll need pots for anything. Uh, so yeah, I think we will use just go go ahead and use the double, double lay spawner. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll work the whole day and at regular intervals I'll come back and show what I've done in that. I'm not sure how I'll do it because I've never built a double double one before. But I think I'm just going to spend the first part of the time, uh, the first part of the day clearing away a bunch of land and just get, see the proximity between the two. I mean we've already got a general idea but I'd like to get some more, a, more, a, be a better view of how close or how far away they are. Okay, well I've not dug too much of the two spawners out. We're back at the fortress by the way. Um, here's one over here, there's one up there. Just to double prove that they both work when I'm in the vicinity. They are quite close to each other, which is pretty good. Um, uh, I think I'm going to get started building one of them now, at least a frame of it. I think if I build the frames of both of them, I can then do the technical stuff afterwards. I mean, that might be a mistake, I don't know. But I think if we build the frame, we know how much we have to dig out. Um, I, I forgot this one was buried. For some reason I thought this one was out in the open too, but uh, not really. Also, this one isn't really out, out in the open either. It was pretty well buried as well. It's only once you get over here that you start to you start to get out in the open a bit more. Uh, but yeah, I think this is... I think we're definitely going to go for it. You know why? Why we should definitely take this opportunity to use us two spawners so close to each other. I mean, it might be that tomorrow I find a a fortress closer to zero zero that's uh, got two spawners that are perfectly placed. But you know, just whatever. We're just gonna go with this. I think. I think what we'll have is like a platform up here where we can activate the two spawners and then we can just go down and kill them whenever we're. We're not gonna join them. I don't think. I think that would be. Uh, too complicated. We're just going to have two separate outputs and yeah, we can just kill them uh, in those two separate outputs. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to get started building. I'm not going to show you how to build it. I'll link the video, uh, Etho's video in the description. 
and you just can go and look at that. But I'll just gonna build this off camera and I'll make regular updates whenever something significant happens. So I have uh, I've been working on the Blaze Farm for a wee bit. I've got par it partially done actually. I've only just started. I've got nothing of it done. But we're here at another fortress. I think there's about four or five fortresses I've now found in a small area of my world. I can't believe, originally when we went out to search for fortresses, we just could not find them. And now there's like four or five in such a small area. I am definitely not the best when it comes to searching for these things. <laughs> As uh, Ultra Hardcore and Done By Midnight have proved over the, over the year. Uh, however, this one is just close to the portal that goes to our desert outpost. And I decided to explore it. Got lots of good stuff in the chests here. A couple of diamonds, gold iron, good horse armor. Pretty cool. Then I found this. Place spawner. Yes. Just like any other fortress. And then I decided to go over here, ran down here. Oh look, another place spawner. Uh, so what we effectively have here is a dual spawner. They are both at the same altitude. They are not quite aligned. But look how close they are. And they are both active. Even if I stand up here, if I stood down there, they would definitely be active. So effectively here we've got um, a perfect, almost perfect uh, couple of spawners here for a dual blaze farm. The problem is it it's about half a kilometre away from the origin and I would much prefer to have a blaze farm closer to zero zero. Um, also I've begun the other blaze farm, I don't really want to tear it down or whatever. Now my thought is, obviously we don't want to have too much XP farms and that, but I might, I'm going to screenshot the coordinates, uh, I might as well screenshot the coordinates with the blaze far, uh, the blaze spawners in view just so I know what I'm screenshotting, or the, what the coordinates lead to. And um, we might come back here and do something with them. I'm not sure what, but I was thinking of doing maybe a like an automatic blaze farm with that would just give me um, you know what you call them blaze rods because they are very important and you know things like that. So we might come back here and do a project here. I I don't know, but fact is we've got another double spawner here. Um, if that other blaze farm proves too challenging to hook up then I might just come here and do stuff here. I mean that will probably take many episodes much, so much time. This week could basically be blaze week for all I know. Uh, I'll show you how close I was as well. So those spawners were just you know through there down to the right and my portal to our portal to the desert outpost it's just behind this lava. Remember the lava death trap that we saw when we first came through? This is where it is. Um, so I don't know how I didn't see it before. It, it's even like full view when you're on the way back. But I don't know, it's just really, really weird. Uh, anyway, I came back here to get more sand because I realised I'd run out of... Uh, I needed glass and, and all that sort of stuff. We're just going to leave stuff we don't need here uh, and we'll grab a bunch of sand and head back uh, but yeah that is kind of good to find that sort of stuff I don't think I've ever found a spot spawners quite like that um, of course you know you probably know how indecisive I am therefore <laughs> the next in the next scene it could cut to me being here again and I'll be like oh you know guys I've just decided that we're gonna go ahead and build the spawner farm XP thing here after all. Um, so that could well happen. But yeah, see look, this is the way I walked. It's like right there. How did I not see it? Or maybe it's because I was walking down there. I don't know. But yeah, it's just like right there. Uh, I built a staircase here. Full view of it. That's just very, very strange. Uh, I've been working a bit. It's just after one in the afternoon. I've been working on this now for four hours or so, although that's obviously a lot of that's been running back and getting resources and stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with how things have gone. We've got the two mob farm, the frames of both farms up. Now, my plan originally was just to make two separate farms, but I'm up for a challenge. Over the course of the day, I've somehow got in the mood for a challenge. And 
I think we're going to just uh, go and try and link the two up. <laughs> now, this is easier said than done. Uh, for one thing, moving Blaze is not very easy. Two, for me, who's got no experience in improvising in Minecraft, or very little experience in improvising in Minecraft, I will find this very, very challenging. But, let's do it anyway, just to say I've done something unique without looking at a tutorial. <laughs> um, so yeah, what my plan is, my plan is to, I'm going to have to experiment with, experiment with this a lot. I'm on Peaceful, by the way, just to double confirm. Um, what I think we're going to do is move them from here closer to this one, because this one's already at a low altitude. This one is significantly higher. I mean, if you look here, by the time they get to here, uh, what are we at? We're at 57. That's basically one above the first level, or no, that is the first level that these blades have to hit. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and um, move the move the blaze from uh, here down here, and then we'll try and move them uh, by dropping them down a wee bit more over here. Um, not sure how this is going to work, to be honest with you, but I kind of want to try. You know, it could be worse. The uh, the whole uh, the blaze farms could be in worse positions. They could be in better positions, but they could be worse positions. But I'm happy to go with what we've got at the minute. Um, so off camera, I'm going to try and uh, link the two up somehow. I'm going to experiment a bit. Might go into creative mode. I don't know. Uh, not creative mode in this world, obviously. But I'll go into like a test world or something. And uh, yeah, I will be back with success or with failure. All right, well, things are coming together. Um, one thing that I did realize, like something which could make this project or this build unusable, is the lag that the redstone will cause, because this is going to be used or it's going, to, it's, going to, it's going to be run using redstone. But I think I, I still want to go ahead with that. I'm going to try and finish it uh, with the redstone that... Um, well, with the redstone all done and that. And we shall see if... how laggy it is in the end. Um, but as you can see, I've managed to join up the two tubes. This is what... Well, one tube will get staircased down to a one by one here. And then we'll get pushed a short way here. Well, this other one has got a little longer uh, to go. It, it, it's, it's got a longer distance to travel, but hopefully that won't affect it too much. Obviously, obviously it's not symmetrical, but we can't really do anything about that. So stuff that I'm just going to um, go go along with it. One thing I should mention is this is based off of the way Etho uh, linked up his to his double mo uh, blaze spawners. I am not actually looking, I've not checked the world file yet, his world file yet, to see how he did it. I'm trying to do it uh, myself, but this is inspired by him. It's not a new idea. I do not claim credit for that, which is not uh, not my own. So, <laughs> this is not my own design. It was originated, uh, but originally done by Etho, but... And if I can find the episode in which he built, it, the, built this, then I would link it, but... I'm not sure I'm going to find it in 400 plus episodes. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to continue with this, oops, to uh, success or failure, we shall see. So quite a bit is, well, maybe not quite a bit, but a lot has changed in the last uh, hour or so. I've begun to get, uh, well, I've got started on the redstone. I downloaded, I, or I looked at the download of Etho's last, uh, of Etho's LP world, and I went and checked out the wiring for the uh, the clock, which pushes the blaze into a centerpiece, which is obviously here. Uh, and yeah, I, most of the wiring, or most of the filtering up to this point is my own. I just decided, I was like, you know what's going to work best? Um, so I just went for it. We can test it. If it doesn't work, I'll, I'll cry and uh, give up and maybe work on this another year. But for now, we're going to continue with it. So this is the start of the clock, sorry for Skype sounds, but they'll be going off at, uh, a wee bit now and then. It's a surprise on what it is though. 
<laughs> I can't tell you. Um, or I choose not to. Anyway, enough of that. Let's continue to build a wee bit on camera here. Uh, I'm doing this from memory, and actually it's going to be very different the way I do it compared to how Etho did it, because he had a perfect, uh, two perfect blaze spawners aligned. I've got two which are very much unaligned. So, yeah, this is going to be radically different to what it is that I saw. But nevertheless, I think it can work. Sorry, just count, just counting there, just to make sure that it, the the wire did reach all uh, all the way. Um, but yeah, hopefully I can continue uh, continue with this for the rest of the day. I'm not sure how long the episode has been. I might not include all of it. It might end up being like a 40 minute thing of me just coming back and forward. But uh, yeah, no, whatever. This is a uh, this LP is not. Uh, well, it's, it's meant to be entertaining, I guess, but it's also just, like I said, documentation of how I, personally, how I, James the Douglas, play Minecraft. And uh, this is how I do it. If I want to build a blaze farm, I usually take a whole day out and just try and nail it, which is what we're doing today. Alright, progress has been made. We have got the thing running. Uh, frame rate check. It's not too bad. It's just, it was hovering above 10, I guess. Um, but that's to be expected without so many redstone updates. Of course I won't be recording when I'm using this, so it doesn't make a difference. Uh, actually that's a good point, I'll tell you the frame rate then when I'm not recording. Right, frame rate when I wasn't recording was just below 20. Now I know that doesn't seem like much, but it is a big difference. Like, people who don't regularly play with this low frame rate don't understand how big a difference it is. Like, 10 FPS and 20 FPS doesn't seem like a huge difference but it is a massive difference. Same with between 5 and 10, there's a huge difference. I think the lower you go, the bigger the difference between frames. Uh, so, because I mean, there's no difference between 100 and 200, well, no, 100 and, yeah, 100 and 200. You don't see a big difference. Apparently the human eye can only see, what, 60? Uh, fair some people see 70 FPS. So you don't really need, um, you don't really need to, to to have any higher, but obviously people do for their own reasons, which is fine. But I think as you get higher, there's you know less of a difference. Uh, but for me, 19 is a big difference from 11, so that's what we're going with. Uh, this is the clock here, which I copied off of uh, Ethos World. What's happening here? It looked like it glitched out there. I think this is a pulse limiter, although I'm not sure because I've not actually watched the episode in which he built it. Uh, well, no, sorry, I have watched it, but it was a while ago since I watched it. But I'm pretty sure that's a pulse limiter. Uh, we've got uh, the repeaters pointing at the pistons, alternating between, is that two ticks and four ticks? And then round here it's between one tick and three ticks, I think. And quite cleverly, uh, instead of having just... Because what I was going to do was experiment by just putting one long line, right line of redstone. I saw that he threw it, uh put pistons here to pack, continue the signal on, but it would limit it so that it would be more of a chain reaction rather than just all the pistons going at once. See, that's that sort of redstone I would never be able to think up because my redstone knowledge is pretty limited, but hopefully this will be a learning curve. Um, so yeah, this is the start of it. Uh, I think we can possibly test it now, actually. Uh, we should go do that now, I think. Um, we just need to go remove the frame of the or the template in the uh, farms, and then we'll uh, switch to hard and to get it going. So yeah, we got to get in there and get rid of all that, and get it going. All right, so all the stuff has been removed. We're just going to turn it on using this button. Uh, we can probably do more technical stuff later on, but we're just trying to get the the bases done here today. That's that done. And now we'll just go up here to the place where we can activate both spawners. Pretty sure it's up here. Uh, let's just pull it up a wee bit to see if that spawner is active. I think it should be. Yep, it's active. Can we see it from here? Yeah, we can. Okay. Yep, it's active. Okay. And this one around here is active as well. 
Let's do it. I'm just going to AFK. Well, I guess I'll record it. Oh. Please work, please work, please work, please work, please work. Hmm. That's not good. It looks like they're stuck. It looks like they're stuck for some unknown reason. I think... They're taking their time getting through. I mean, they are getting through. It's just not as quickly and efficient, efficiently as I was hoping. Let's see what these guys are doing. Yeah, they're not fading that much better, are they? And there'll be more of these guys spawning. This is pretty funny. Look at this. I, I, I left a... Uh, um, unintentionally left a piece of netherrack in the system. It's gradually getting pushed along, although not as quickly as it should, but or as I would like it to be, but it's pretty funny to watch its progress. Obviously you can see it's very laggy. You can't some of the times you can't even see the pistons moving, but you can see the lights of the uh, repeaters go by. I don't even see these lights going on. Alright, there we go. It's gonna make it all the way to the center and then it's just going to get stuck there I think. Well, where did it go? Oh, I think we got. Yeah, it's now part. It's now part of a piston. But we do have a problem. They are collecting in there, though. So I'm wondering if this, if this is a problem I can live with. Um, but basically, as you can see, they are getting stuck. Um. It's come to a complete standstill. It's like Manhattan at rush hour. I actually don't know what Manhattan at rush hour is like, but I'm imagining it's something like this. Let's turn the sounds down a bit. Um, but yeah, this is a bit of an issue. I don't really know how to sort it, in all honesty. Uh, let's see what this guy does here. Yeah, they just kind of seem to get pushed to the side and. I mean, they get filtered in there, don't get me wrong, it, they, they do get filtered, so it does its job, it just doesn't do it efficiently, which is kind of annoying. Uh, the one over here actually seems to be working quite well, although we're out of beacon rate, uh, spawning range at the minute. This one over here seems to work, and that could be because it is shorter than the, this one. Um, whereas this one is just a complete mess, and they're still spawning in there because obviously it's closer to the ground. Uh, but yeah, it's... So I wanted to give them both equal distance to go, but it seems that this one's more efficient, even though it's got they've got further to travel technically. Um, I I honestly have no idea what <laughs> what to do. I'm gonna go back and look at uh, the world, Ethos world, for a bit and just see uh, see what that does. You might notice I've changed the sticky pistons out, which is regular pistons, because they were getting crushed and. I would rather they were all up there with full health than, you know, some having uh, less hearts. Because I want to use the crusher technique to get them down to one hit. Oh no! That's not good. Time to abandon ship. Yep, definitely time to abandon ship. Alright, uh, <laughs> I, I think I'm going to end it there. I've not been short of material or entertainment today. Um, it's actually almost five in the af in, in the evening, afternoon, whatever. Five p.m. I've been at this since nine in the morning. Ah, oh, this is what Minecraft survival's about. These long projects that take nine till five. Uh, but I'm going to end it there. Uh, thank you for watching. I will probably do more of this off camera this evening because it's you know once you get a project, you just want to finish it, and I want to finish this one even though it's going terribly. What the oh, you know why that is. It's because it's switched here. Let's turn that off. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching. And I'll see you again.